Jean True Love from True Love Quilts for You. Um, this is part two of my three zipper bag tutorial. Um, I had finished off my other bag having made the pockets in part one. So I have made quite a few of these bags in the last few days. They're really quite addictive. And what I want before I get into my long tutorial, and somebody just told me I babbled a lot. Of course I babble. Of course I babble. You can't make these things in three minutes, folks. Let me tell you. Um, I'm, I'm about two hours, an hour and, 40, an hour and 50 minutes to two hours to make one now. Um, I've, gotten, I've gotten pretty quick, but I just wanted to share with you um, if you've gotten to this halfway point before the tutorial to come, just a few things that I have learned from making my bags. Now, again, if you are new, the tutorial, the second half of my tutorial to follow is the making of this little bag. All right. So if you're new and haven't seen part one, it's a little bag with little, um, like a little carrier bag. And then you open it up and in out comes three pockets, three zippered compartments. Um, you will need four zippers in this project. Again, I've explained what you need in the first half, but it's sweet. You can use up scraps. You can use 10 inch squares, bit of yardage if you have it. And my tutorial makes a bag this size. Um, this was slightly small. And again, I explained that because the first bag I ever made was this one. And it is a little, a tiny little bit larger. And again, in part one, I explained what I did as far as the pockets. So you can refer back to that. But I've made this size um, and this size all of the same. And, um, and I had shown you sort of a demonstration on what this little bag can hold. A tremendous amount, okay? So the tutorial's to follow. But I just wanted to share with you again, before I get into the tutorial, what I've learned. And when I was, when I was experimenting, I had started thinking, well, what if I, this is the size that my tutorial shows you that it will be. So that's the size, fully enclosed pockets, lovely, super, nothing comes out. Um, but I, I started making, I made this one and it's, as you can see, it's a little bit larger. All right. Still has, the, it still has a 22 inch zipper around the top and it opens up like that with the three pockets. But what, what had happened is I, as I started making more and I also, I started making more, I started out with purchased seam binding, which you're going to be getting to. I now use my, um, use my quilt binding. And on this bag here, I show you a clip of how I put my binding. This will be at the end of this tutorial, how I put my binding on the front here with quilt binding. My original tutorial, again, you must, is edited, is edited for when I did that several days ago with the purchase binding. But this part of the, this little video, I'm showing you how I did it with this quilt binding here. And as you can see, I have made this bag that much larger. And I've also put a pocket in the, in the, in the um, front, on the front. And as it is, it pretty much lays flat. But again, I was experimenting and I made this little bag. Again, I like this size. And with this bag here, it really almost does lay, when you put that there, the tabs, it really does lay pretty flat on the table. And again, I put a little pocket there. Now, I'm making these a little bit larger because I'm going to be making presents for people. When I see people, <laughs> I haven't seen people. What are people? <laughs> but I thought this bag here, while it, well, again, I explained it in, in um, video one, part one, while it's not fully enclosed because it has an opening there, it, you're not going to be, these you can flip around. These, nothing will come out. But these are more of like a bag. But I thought for a, for a diaper, like a, not a diaper bag, but to stick you, this, this way it's made, you can stick a, a diaper in there, maybe two, and maybe a pack of wipes. Or if it's a child um, or, or yourself, paint brushes and a small pad, a notepad could fit in there. I like this size. Now, how I made that size, I give you the, uh, I give you the, 
measurements in the beginning and but I was as I was saying I you cut you cut you cut your four pieces um, 10 inches by eight and a half inches okay for the pockets but I was I was experimenting on this size here I'm now for these three I have been using 10 inch squares that go into there and then they make that they make that part there because the eight and a half inch goes from here up to the pocket that creates the pocket the eight and a half inch square so I still cut well you could use 10 inch squares but again I just want to show I just want to share with you just something I I just slightly I tweaked as I was saying you can use 10 inch squares by all means um but I was using on this one I was using they've been already batted I was I cut my fabric this is cut from fabric 10 and a quarter inches by 10 and a quarter inches 10 and a quarter inches by eight and a half inches okay and why I did that is because the backing which then becomes the front of the bag okay this is this is what I've done this is the back of the this is the the, the um when you lay it down when you lay it down like that you put your pockets on it and then you attach it to the front the, the bag like the bag itself um I was cutting this at 10 inches by about 15 and a half inches or 13 inches something like that something like that again you can see the things but now I'm cutting this about 10 and a quarter I I quite like it the reason I cut this at 10 and a quarter is because when I cut it 10 10 inches and then I quilted it it shrunk and so you have a 10 inch pocket and it, it goes on to about a nine and a three quarter nine and a half inch shrunken up bit so what I'm saying is I erred on the larger side for both the pockets and the backing now again I wanted to address just a few things um this as you can see was directional fabric okay sweet little dogs well they all went up and down so what I did is I cut I cut this is larger than it should be but I so I'm going to I'm going to cut it down just about an inch or so or half an inch or so when I put the pocket assembly on here but what I did is I cut it in half and then I put the I put the directional side going this way and the directional side going that way so that when it's finished with the directional fabric the directional fabric is going the exact same way joined with a joining strip now this actually isn't a joining strip I actually for sturdiness I actually I put the two seams two two fabrics together I made it with a seam and then I made a strip that I top stitched down onto the bottom and that's the bottom of your bag also I have a little trick and I mentioned it and maybe you didn't understand it in, a, in part one I you, um, when I was experimenting with all sorts of different interfacings a lot of people like these stiffer I quite like them a little bit cushy so I use a fu fusible batting I've used a fusible fleece I've used Pellon craft fuse which is stiffer but what I had gotten is I had gotten from wherever I got it from I got it online but I don't know where I got the idea I had gotten this <laughs> look, at all, look at all this this is called this is headliner foam for the cars I was telling you about it in part one this is foam it's, it's obviously not glued or anything it's just a foam it's just a foam but it I was using it I used it in uh, this bag here I used that in that bag in here and I've used it in here but you're saying well that's not that foam what I did again my learning curve is I used it in here and then I realized it's a little bit too squishy it's a little bit too squishy and not quite the substance so I put a I put the outside layer of fabric I put a layer of the foam which is cheap the, the foam stabilizers are expensive this was really cheap car headliner fab stuff I got a whole bunch of it and then what I thought I'd do is I put a pillon interfacing an iron-on fusible on that on that sandwich there and then I quilted it I quilted it quite generously as you can see so this is really a nice little quilted back uh, back which becomes the front and the back of my bag it's a little bit substantial so whereas these were very pretty and they were quilted very pretty but they're and they're completely different size my bags now have evolved from this into something larger and has a pocket in it 
And then also I want to explain that I'm still using three 12 inch zippers that I cut down, but and also a 22 inch zip, I mean a 22 inch zipper for this part here that goes all the way around. But what I was finding was they weren't opening as flat because the zipper, because of the, the, the size, obviously took up the zipper. So what I have done is as you can see, I made the tab much bigger. And if you really, I mean, it lays flat, that's pretty good. But if you really wanted it to lay completely, utterly flat, just make the tab much, just make the tab longer. Like that. So, so you can really lay this flat. So this is what I was thinking. If you go to a, a, a sewing retreat you can, or something like that, you can put your needles in there or whatever, your pins, everything, and then all your notions. This can hold rotary cutters and smaller rulers and seam rippers and marking pens if you do go on quilting retreats or a jewelry bag. I was showing it to Elliot, our son, and he's like, oh, make it in dark fabrics, mom, for a guy for like a toiletry bag, like, or a camping bag. Like, like that would be awesome, like in a, in a camo fabric or something like that, to hold knives and the small tools and, you know, markers and compasses or whatever guys carry, I don't know, um, like in, in a bag like that. And he said, uh, he loved it. And, you know, and my other sons, they were like, this is really cool, mom, that is really nice. So what I'm getting to is, um, I'm, it's evolving. Now, my, again, my process was um, when I started out, I had cut everything out, but I find it the easiest for me, again, for me, I cut everything out. I found it the easiest to create this backing, the actual bag, and to, to sandwich however you want to sandwich your interfacing is your, your foam or whatever you want to use. I found that the easiest and the, the most, um, uh, not the most um, satisfying to, to make that first. I just cut that out, cut out the, the, the foam and the interfacing, and then I quilted it. I found that, that, so that's ready. I also have, I also created, and I also make these, which are the side, the side bits right here, the side bits. I made them a, a, in advance. So I just, they're just two bits of fabric. I give you the measurements. Um, two bits of fabric that I've, I've t made and I've top stitched, your outer and your lining. These are the same. Um, again, by all means, you can use up scraps in this because the pockets are, the pockets are completely just all different types of fabric, if you wish. Now, you could use the exact same fabric for everything, obviously. You don't have to go crazy with your patterns, which I have done. Um, uh, again, my zippers, I've gotten bulk zippers online. Um, uh, they're fine. They're inexpensive. You get like 60 of them for $13 or something online. Um, I get my 12 inch zippers. And then, um, as I said, the, the zipper tabs you can make lo longer. Uh, I've, I've addressed your directional fabrics to, to make them so they you, the center seam down the middle of the bag. And then also I do have used, and I quite like my two and a quarter inch quilt binding, which on this bag, at the end, I will show you how I attached my two and a quarter inch binding. Whereas before on the actual tutorial, I use purchase bias tape. So anyway, that is that. Um, I am, I've, I'm on a roll. I enjoy making these. They're fun to make. Um, I hope you've enjoyed part one and don't be sh don't shy away. Oh, also one little hint. If you are going to make these, you're going to, you're going to be <laughs> cursing. No, you're not. You're going to be saying this bit here, Jean. Oh my word. It's still tucked. I've seen pictures online and they're perfect. They're perfect like U shapes. They're perfect. I can't get them like that. I don't know how they do that. They're little tucks. And so with the tucks and this sort of a outside French seam here, as I call it, um, it's, it's a lot of fabric. But what I found useful is you can almost hammer that, those, that seam down. You can almost really do that and then really push it flat to try to get your, to get, get this bit on that project. That's the hardest, fiddliest, awkwardest part. And perhaps not for a beginner, as I have mentioned. So, but then I, again, I just, I just did a little pocket there, just a little square of fabric put there. You can do it on both sides. Um, I quite like using up all my, well, not my, all my fabrics, but I'm pulling from my, my extensive stash here and making these, what a nice present. And I think I will continue making them that size. 
I, I think that's just the prettiest thing. And, um, and then also, I, if, I, if you're just tuning in, um, if you become a patron, you can go see my first, my first video. I'm going to be giving these, one each here, one, two, three of these bags. I'm going to be giving these away to three lucky winners who, if you join me on Patreon, Patreon and become a patron, which is leaving me a tip in my sewing room. Um, every month I send off a project that I make. This tutorial, part one and part two, is for everybody here on YouTube free. But I do have a patron account where people have paid me a tip. And for that, this month or next month, there are three winners will win one each. So, so uh, become a patron and you have a chance to win this little bag. Anyway, I'm going to finish up with the second part of this tutorial. Um, I hope you enjoy it and I hope you make them. And if you do, I would love, I would love, love, love to see your pictures. And that could be sent to True Love Quilts for You at Gmail. You can send me a picture if you've made the smaller ones or if you make the larger ones. However, um, have fun, pull your fabrics, and again, I hope you enjoy this little tutorial, the second half. If you haven't seen the first half, go check part, part one. And um, yeah, thanks again, folks, for all your kindness. And um, yeah, have a safe day. See ya. have made our entire pockets okay there's our lovely pocket there okay now again keep this to the middle about to the middle now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making constructing this side bit here now I messed up this this was a little bit on this one here I made it a little bit too long and and I had to tuck it and it was a really lot of fabric so and that was at 15 and a half inches so I'm hoping I can show you, because I've cut this 15 and a half inches and it might be a little bit long, but I'll do it like I did it and then I'll just see how, as I go along. So this is our pieces, our two pieces of the, the, the um, top of the fabric, the outside of the fabric and my lining fabric. Now I just put, scratch them together and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking my ruler and I'm going to go over, I'm going to find my middle, which is right there, and I'm going to go over to my four and a half inch line. My four and a half inch. I'll just mark it. There's my four and a half inch there. And then when I when I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it this way and then scratch it together. Um, where is my here's my rotary cutter? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna go from the corner, scratch it together, I'm gonna go from that line to the corner. On that line, I'm just going to cut off that angle, okay? And we end up with a piece, two, four pieces that look like that, which are basically that bit there, as you can see. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting, just very, very simply, we're going to be putting the right sides together, the pretty sides together of this fabric here. And just be careful when you're stitching it because this is on the bias. This is a bit stretchy there. So what we're gonna do is all you're gonna do is you're gonna line it up, clip it, pin it, whatever, and you're gonna stitch up. You're gonna stitch in about a quarter of an inch all the way around. Um, and what I do is I'm, I'm just gonna reinforce, just go back stitch and back stitch on these corners. Back stitch, back stitch on these corners and then go back down. And then we're just gonna clip, clip them off. When we turn them, we're, we're gonna just clip those corners off and then we're gonna turn them inside out. So I have stitched all the way around, quarter of an inch, and I'm just gonna cut these corners off. I did back stitch here. I'm just gonna slice them off. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go over, I'm gonna turn this very carefully again because it's on the bias. I'm gonna be very carefully turn this inside out, like that. This is the piece we want. Again, we are working with this side piece here that has all sort of funky folds, but I'll show you that in a minute. We're gonna turn that inside out and then very carefully so that none of the, so that the lining doesn't show on this side and this side doesn't show on the lining, I'm going to press that really well on both bits and then I'm going to top stitch along that top edge on both pieces. 
So as you can see here, I have top stitched along my pieces that I've, that I've turned in. Now, what I have done, what I've started doing, is you're going to be finding the middle, the exact middle of this bit here. You can just finger press that, or you can go over and iron it. And then either on the inside or the outside, you just want to mark, you just want to mark that, that place right there, which is the, which is the, ins the, the, the exact center. And then with the ruler, like I've done here, is you want to take your ruler and you want to go over and you want to mark two and a half inches from that center, from that line there. You want to just mark two and a half inches and make a, make a line. Two and a half right there to two and a half. Now what I've done is I've actually, I've actually put a pin, I've actually put a pin in there, sort of going down, straight, on all, where I've, where I've marked it. Now I'm going to go over to my ironing board, and where these pins are, I'm going to iron and crease these bits really, really good. I'm going to crease them into the inside. I'm going to go over and crease it like that. Okay? I'm going to go over and crease it like that. I'm going to go over and crease it like that. Now that, why I'm doing that, is that makes up this bit here. We are going to fold this fold, these folds, over onto our raw seams. Okay? We're going to manipulate this piece so it encloses these pocket edges there. That's what we're doing now. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to crease this. So now that we've made our creases, as you can see, one, two, three, one, two, three, we're going to make the sides of our pockets here. But I, I did, I had erred on the on the um, cautious side, I made these a little bit wider than they need be, and I'll show you. I'll show you what we're going to do, and we're just going to trim this down. Better, bigger than small. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking our with the inside, the pretty side, into the inside and the outside of our fabric. We're going to be wrapping the first fold, the first fold of our side panel. We're just going to be wrapping that right onto that right onto that seam there, or that side of the packet, right there. Now, my, my zipper with a quarter inch seam or so is going to be enclosed right at the top there. Can you see that? Oh, I'm so pleased. And we're going to, on the fold, it's a little bit jiggery pokery, but you can do this. You do need to have clips because you want to keep everything straight. You want to keep everything straight. We're going to just be working one at a time here. You're going to be stitching from the top all the way down to the bottom, okay? But I've made these slightly, slightly too wide. So I'm just going to, I don't want too much bulk in that seam. I'm just going to line them up. I'm just going to shave off right now about a quarter of an inch on this long edge here. Just about a quarter of an inch. Hopefully that will work out just slightly better and not have too much bulk in that bottom bottom seam there. Line it up on my board and then line it up with my ruler and then just slice off about a quarter of an inch and it makes a nice straight seam anyway. So again, what I'm going to be doing is with my with my my package out like that and my three pockets in front of me, I did move my my clip my um safety pins to the middle you really have to be careful you, that you don't whack them off so what i'm going to be doing again is i'm going to take my first fold and i'm going to line my fold up you can feel it and it just goes right onto that edge of the pocket do you see that and then that encloses that raw seam really really well and i can catch my zipper tab at the top there i can just catch that and I actually may go over and do a little bit of, of a little um, top stitch to hold that zipper there. But right, right now, I'm just going to go over. You can use your clips for this, but I have my pins here. My clips are over there. And I'm just going to go over with this one. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to stitch along there. Well, if I had my clips, I'll show you what I'll do. So I stitch. I, I'm enclosing that raw pocket edge, okay? Now, we're going to pull it up. And it gets a little bit, to get, it gets a little bit fiddly here. But we're going to find our second fold, which, which is right there. We've made a nice crease, and we're just going to envelop this second pocket here. Okay, it's just a little fiddly, 
but there's our second fold and here is our second pocket now when again because you've already stitched the other one you're just going to have to be real careful when you put it in your machine to push that away okay out from under the presser foot and you're just going to go down and you're just going to do that quarter of an inch trying to enclose the top of that zipper tab there then we're going to do the exact same thing on my third fold my third pocket there i'm going to match up the top match that crease there put the crease right in the crease there and we have this flappy bit that's fine keeping this all lovely and straight and then we're going to stitch right down there quarter of an inch and that's going to create hopefully it won't have that pucker there that's going to create these enclosed little uh, seam lovely sort of seams right there that uh, an accordion see the the, the 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 way the bag is made this opens up that accordion pleat there and then it just folds onto itself to do that and that just gets tucked right in there so i'm just going to go over matching my fold up with the edge of my bag, my edge of my pocket, clipping it or pinning it however you want to do it, and then trying to catch that zipper tab up at the top. We've matched it pretty good. And then we're going to come down and we're going to stitch, we're just going to stitch. Don't worry about this raw edge, we're just going to stitch right to that, right to that, um, that line there. So this is so this is what I wanted to show you what I'm doing. So what I've done is I've folded this I've folded this over onto itself right here on that on that fold and I'm quite pleased because I've just taken my my top off and my zipper goes right into there. I quite like that. It's not perfect, but it's perfect enough for me. And I've gone over I'm going to clear that little bit of bird's nest up. I have back stitched and back stitched there on the top there and as you know me I've done that twice I like to reinforce my seams now I'm going to find my second fold which is if you can see there's my line and there's my fold and I'm just going to I'm just going to enclose this second pocket here so it's a little bit fiddly because I've already enclosed my first and it's attached but there's my fold and there's my there's the fold and there we go it's just going to come right it's just going to that fold is right along that side there enclosing that raw edge and again my zipper tab is sort of tucked underneath quite i'm quite pleased about that and i just push the i push the underneath away push the underneath away by all means you could use clips or pins but i think i think they just get in the way myself you just have to take them off i'm just going to hand wheel this because there's the um it's a, it's a bit it's a bit um Lots of fabric, so my, my, fa my machine will do it. And I'm going in, I can feel that pocket edge right there on that fold. This is nice and straight, that's important. So I'm enclosing that raw edge, pocket seam. Just go slow, and I'm gonna go right down to the end. Right down to almost, almost the end, back stitch, back stitch. And I'm gonna go back, and I'm gonna do it again. There's my, I'm, I'm beginning to get my accordion pleat there. You see that? From my side. It is a little bit fiddly, but you can do it. I'm just going to go back. On that top edge, I'm sort of enclosing that zipper. And I'm just going to go right back down on that stitching that I've already done. I'll go back and clip all of these threads real real good and then exactly the same way I'm going to take my my third fold and I'm going to bring up my third pocket and you can see it fits really nice there's my sort of accordion pleated in and there's my fold right there there's my fold and there's my pocket tuck tuck this extra in and line it up nice and straight on your pocket your fold and then it fold it around so it's lovely and square and it's and your seam your your raw edge is really really nice and enclosed in that seam there now I'm going to put my zipper tabs together Bring this down slightly 
really push really push your um, seam into that fold there T making sure there's no tucks on the other side start at the top if you use a metal zipper I don't know you might have trouble I'm using a nylon tooth zipper uh, 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 obviously making sure that's nice and tucked that's straight my fold is there nothing is underneath you have to be careful and then just stitching all that rubbish into this point here and again I'll go and clip all my corners anyway this is how this is how we want to it end up looking can you see that that is how we want to it to end up looking like okay don't worry about this raw seam down here we're going to finish that up oops oh no I caught it oh no 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 yeah look 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 I have to undo that where's my seam ripper I have to undo that I caught that second one do you see that I just realized, oh, and that, that's when I backstitched, right? I backstitched, backstitched, backstitched. So I have to open that up. That's what you have to be careful of. You have to be very, very careful that you don't catch. You're only catching the seam that you're wanting to sew, the pocket area that you're wanting to sew. You're not, yeah, there you go. You're not wanting to catch that, that seam there. So I have to open that up. I just have to open this up a little bit because I've caught it all. And so it's, it, it ends up, it ends up next to each other, not on top of each other. So then I'm going to do this. So I'm, I'm real pleased here. I'm real pleased. I've enclosed my zipper top, so I'm very pleased about that. I'll just fix that bit right there, and that's how it's going to end up looking like that. And I'm going to just do the other side. So I have attached both of my side bits and uh, my, my, side, my side lining and made these sort of exposed covered seams here quite lovely and I my my I've done it wide enough so that that my zipper is sort of enclosed just pushes up to there I'm okay with that maybe I could have done a prettier zipper tab but uh, it's I don't know how to do that so it's all right it goes right to the end here I've done these two here like that as you can see my bot the base goes to the bottom there and then this one goes all the way to the end making a lovely enclosed pocket what I have done as I've realized I've done it on that side, but I realized what we want to end up with is this, okay? We're going to pull these flaps out here, and we're going to stitch this seam here, okay? We're going to stitch this side seam down, all right? Just like I've done on that one. So it's nice and, cl it's a nice and closed. There's no raw edges on anywhere, okay? Um, but what, what I have think what I've... What's happened over there and here and on my first one is there's this big there's to make the accordion I don't know it's wide enough here, but it's too wide down here So I've just had to sort of tuck You know sort of make a make a uh, sort of a pleat in here. I don't know how to get rid of that I don't know how to do it um, Yeah, I don't know how to do it So what I've done is I've just sort of smushed that inside like that and I and then what we're going to do at this point why I'm telling you at this point with this stuff here is if you want to take your clips here I will use my clips here this should be about this should be about quarter of an inch away from that top edge it's about right that quarter of a way on the on for mine on the pink so starting starting at about quarter of an inch away with the dimensions I've given you and I cut that, if you remember, 15 and a half. So what I do is I smash that away. It's very thick, though. You sort of have to poke it out with your finger on the inside. Push your pockets right away. Push your pockets down. Push your pockets really nice. Pull this, pull these out. And then just, I've just sort of pleated them. I've just sort of pleated them. And then sewn, what we're doing is we're sewing this bottom seam here okay now it's very heavy but my machine did it I did it very slowly I've just sort of tucked it this fabric there I've just sort of tucked it um, now watch my needle break <laughs> it's a quarter of an inch and I'm obviously going to go over and do this several times so I'm just going to come to this mess here <laughs> and it is a bit of a mess just pushing that away and it's just sort of 
it's just sort of seam after seam. Just go slowly. Yeah, I have a, a heavy duty jeans needle in here. Just push my pockets away so I'm not catching anything. And then I'm, it's just sort of a, a folded bit of fabric on, on the seam. Just a bunch of folded fabric. You see that? See, there's the seam. But this is important to just keep this nice and straight. There you go. Like that. Go slowly so you don't break a needle. And then right to the end, like that. And I am definitely, absolutely going to go over this two or three times. And then, but there's my pockets. And they're nice. It's sort of a little fold in there, but they're nice. They're, it's, it's, it's made lovely and, and nice. Now what we are going to do is we're going to finish this with seam binding, but um, I'll show you that next. I'll reinforce this right now. So I have finished my, my, uh, the sides of my bags and my pockets. I'm just going to put that aside for a moment. And what I have done here is I've taken this piece of my outside fabric. I had cut it way too big. It, you can cut it down to about 13 inches, even 12 inches, because you'll see what happens. I, I, and again, I will address that in the beginning. Um, what I've done is I've put my feasible um, batting on the back of it. And um, you would like, you, you should quilt it somehow. I use white thread. It looks nice. Um, I just did it because our bag is going to be going this way. This is what our outside of our bag is going to be. I did, I did, did stitches like this, um, but if you want to free motion quilt this, if you want to do it in the diagonal, if you want to do it in a grid, by all means. So we have a piece now that's about, about 12 inches by 10 inches. That's, a, that's what we want, okay? It's still a little bit big. We'll trim it down. But now with the pretty side down facing towards your, facing down, what you want to do is you want to take, a, want to take your, your, um, your little package here and it, it's, it will fit because it's exactly the 10 inches. It's a little bit bigger on the, in the, um, and the ends, but that's fine. We can trim that off anyway. What we're going to do is we're going to stitch it all the way around. We're going to start at the sides and we're going to stitch it all the way around on that, on that stitching right that we stitched. Push the, pushing this away, we're going to stitch, the, keep the raw, all these raw edges right with the raw edges. You're going to go right around your bag. You're going to do each side and you're going to do the front. You're going to do the sides and you're going to do the front of your bag all the way around. And I'm going to do mine twice because, because that's what I do. Because I think there's a lot, there's a tremendous amount of stress right here. And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to stitch this right down, all the way down to the back the, the um, front of my bag so as you can see here I'm just stitching the, the bottom piece a little bit bigger and again we are stitching obviously the wrong side to the wrong side so this is the outside of our, of our fabric so you'll be able to see your interface in here so I'm going around a second time as I do and again this is a lot of fabric here but my machine which is a which is a juki um, is not having any trouble going over because I sort of am pushing these seam, I'm pushing these bits away. It looks like a tremendous amount, which it is, but uh, I think I'll just go slowly and all of this stuff gets pushed away and as you can see, my machine does it well. So I'm just going to come up to there and then I'm going to, what we're going to do is we're just going to trim this off real nice and neat right in line with that with our front fabrics really lovely and our bag is coming together beautifully you see that isn't that lovely there's my zips oh, i think it's so pretty my zips come to the end <coughs> excuse me and um are lovely and closed and my pockets there's no raw seams anywhere now what we want to do with this with this seam here i have to change my thread but what we want to do is i got out my bias binding my extra wide bias tape here okay and what i'm going to do if if you've watched me before you know that bias binding when it comes out of the package like this it has a, a it has sort of like a front and a back now you have to find it which edge which end it is right so it has sort of a a wider side which on this case is underneath and this is a narrower side here 
it's just about a 32nd of an inch narrower here. That means when you go to put it on your fabric, your fold go your fabric goes right in there onto the fold. And then when you stitch along there, you know for sure because this edge is wider that it's going to catch that edge. That's how it's made from the manufacturer. So, you don't have to worry if you if you put if you tuck your fabric right into that fold and you pull it out pull it over just as it comes off, then you know when you stitch right, right along there, it's going to catch. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change my machine. I've got my, my thread, I should say. Um, just put this about an inch bigger or so, about an inch more. And I'm going to take this, I'm going to just, actually, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to trim this, just get the threads off of that, off of this raw edge here. This has been stitched really nice and well. But I'm going to fold, I'm going to take my bias tape, as you can see, with the wider edge around on the bottom and I'm going to tuck this raw edge right into the fold right into that fold right up into that fold and here I will use my clips to keep it nice tucked you need to have that right up into the fold your fabric so you may want to clip it like that to hold your fabric your, your edge of your fabric your edge of your raw seam into that uh, fold right there. So this again is 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 um is uh, thick, but I find that the when I, I found on that one it went easier with even with the extra fabric here on the um of the bias tape. It's funny that just keep pushing it away out of the way, and all we're doing is we're enclosing that oh, oh that bunch of ugly raw seams right there and I'll show you we're going to tuck all of that stuff in like that clip it hopefully I'm in the frame oh yeah sorry about that and then obviously we're going to get all of that stitching that we've done we're going to enclose all of that stitching I have to, I have to do it a little bit better there I have to do that a little bit better but you get the idea so we're going I'm going to go I'm going to Tuck this right into the fold right there on my fabric. Clip it. Well, you get the idea. And then on the back, that's what it's going to look like. And I'm just going to stitch on the other side with black thread. I'm going to stitch along there. And then we have a, well, I have to fix that. But then we have a lovely finished edge. I'm going to do it on both sides. And that's what becomes this lovely finished edge right there. That's my finished edge with my bias binding. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to change my thread and I'm going to stitch both sides. And then what I'm going to do is I'll just cut this off just about an inch like that. And then I'll, and then I can trim it all up. But um, yeah, so I'm just going to do that now. I'm just going to trim that. I'm just going to stitch that right there. So this is sort of an add-on. I wanted to show you this uh, bag that I'm making here. All right. It's a little bit bigger. Hopefully you can see that. It's a little bit bigger. I've made this a bit wider here. And I actually put a pocket in here. This is my fabric on the outside. And this is this is like the one I, I was showing you in the beginning that was a little bit bigger, right? But now I hopefully again my editing, you must excuse me. Uh, I've hopefully shown you how I did the the um purchased binding, but I'm going to be doing this one here with my quilt binding okay I've cut this at two and a quarter just like I do all my quilt bindings and I've ironed it in half okay I've ironed it right in half now I always start my I always start my I'll start this about an inch uh, uh, an inch ahead of this here just to get me sort of started I have to reach around my my um tripod so now what I'm doing is I'm just lining my raw edges up against the uh, raw edges of all of this mess here and I will I will um, back stitch making sure this is all pushed aside I'm doing this on the inside of my 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 bag here and as you can hear my machine my machine can do it this is soft by uh, batting here so I'm pushing this aside and I'm making sure because as you see, I have stitched this. This, this was the, this was the um, my last step. I stitched these 
this uh, side bit, okay? And I'm, I've secured it down, and I've sort of trimmed up this, I've trimmed up this uh, side seam here. So now I'm just pushing these to the side, and I'm making sure, hopefully, going slow, that my, all my pockets and my bits are just pushed to the side. This is the fiddly awkward bit that I found. This is the fiddly awkward bit. Go slowly. Keeping it nice and straight. Coming right off. I'm reaching around my, my tripod. You must excuse me here. So I'm just coming right off, and I'll just cut that again about about uh, an, an inch ahead of myself or so. Now I'm going to go. Now I'm going to check this actually. Let me see if you can see it in the frame here. Yeah, I hope you can see that. That's really quite nice. It's it's covered up all of that all of that rubbish there on this side here. Okay. Now, but I am going to go back because I feel there's a lot of there's a lot of um, s stitches here, a lot of um, fabric, I should say, fabric layers. So I'm just going to go back on that line of stitching, pushing this to the side. And believe it or not, once you get the once you get the um, binding on, it's uh, the, the, the uh, machine sort of goes e easier. That's right over that last line of stitching, and right off. Now. What I'm going to do now is, oh, 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 I have it like that, okay? Now I'm going to turn it over. Now remember what I said in the beginning, this part here, this bit here on the sides of our bag, this is my top of my bag where the zipper is going to go. This side here is where you're going to see the stitching. This is the, the, the side of our bag. So I'm going to pull this out and my binding, just like binding a quilt, I'm going to start at the very top there on my sort of my uh, leader <laughs> so I get a nice stitch going. I'm going to just push this seam and I'm going to bring the folded edge just like I do on my machine, on my quilts. I stitch on the back side and I turn it to the front side. And then this is decorative stitching plus holding my bits down. Again, this is sort of the awkward part. Go slow. Your top stitching, your binding down. Now again, here's all of the pockets. So I'm going to push that over. Try to make this as flat as possible. Pulling out my binding. And, and because I've it's sewn about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more, this binding folds, folds right over. Now this is the heavy part. But my machine, hopefully, is doing it. You can hear it. It's not struggling, but I don't want to go at fast speed in case my, I do break a needle. And again, I'm just pulling that out. Excuse my hands are in the way. I can see that. I'm just folding that edge over and enclosing all that seam. Again, I'm coming up here to either the front of the, the front of the back of the bag, whatever it is. And I want that stitching to be really nice. And then I'll go right off. Obviously, these, these uh, hanging off bits will get trimmed off. But I just wanted to show you that that is what my bag looks like when I use quilt binding. And I'm going to do that from now on instead of the purchased binding. It makes a beautiful finished edge right there. It's just super. Now, I, I'm going to do my zipper the exact same way. Um, let me just grab it. As hopefully I will show you, you put the teeth up, you put this in the center, and then again, I'm going to be stitching, I'm going to be stitching, sort of sandwiching my, my zipper in between. I'm going to stitch this real, real close to the edge there, just securing it, just securing it, because then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my binding over and I'm going to stitch that down the front there. And uh, and and the way I'm if I if I stitch very very close, very very close to the um edge of the 
the, the real, just, just catch the zipper on the edge, then when I turn the binding over, then I can be assured that I'm not going to, even though I'm, I'm sewing blind, it takes a bit of bravery that I'm not going to sew in the teeth that I'm going to be sewing next to that. But like when I do this, again, the zipper teeth are going to be up. Um, that, that may or may not come be in, next in the video. I'm not quite sure where this where this little hint is, um, but that's how I'm going to do it. I just sort of base my my zipper down, and then I'll proceed with my binding. But I just wanted to show you how lovely a quilt binding cut two and a quarter, two and a quarter, folded in half, stitched to the inside, and then turned around and stitched beautifully, top stitched on the outside of our bag. Um, yeah, so hopefully that's a little handy hint um, that you can use. All right.